Hey friends, my name is Emily and you are listening to the Oh, I'm Lonely podcast. This is my podcast where I unpack all the big feelings I have that usually boil down to loneliness and disconnection from various aspects of my life, from career, communities, loved ones, or sometimes just being plain old alone. This is where we talk about all the different places loneliness creeps its sweet baby self into and I try to understand what story the loneliness is trying to tell me. So please, join me. Because even though it's lonely here, you aren't alone. Hey friends, I am so excited for you to hear this episode this week. It's a long one, but I can guarantee it's such a good time. And there's so many um, rich moments. And the more you listen, the more you'll understand. But also just a good time. This is what I've always wanted to do in a podcast is just bant with friends. And so um, this episode with my good friend, Lindsay Heather Pierce, is quite fun. So yes, we cackle, and so sometimes the audio peaks. <laughs> but what can you do? Um, I had a great time doing it. And um, there is, we were eating and drinking tea while we were recording this episode. So a little bit of a disclaimer for misophonia. Um, I cut out a bunch, but you can hear slight little slurps sometimes, like more further in the beginning of the episode. But yeah, the, the audio gets a little better uh, later in the episode as well, because um, uh, you know, still working out this new microphone. But yeah, it's a good time. I hope you enjoy it. It's lots of laughs. Um, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me, my love. And enjoy the episode, friends. <laughs> and welcome back to the <laughs> podcast, Daisy. Oh my God. Okay, that so was a jealous that sound. that was infuriation. Is infuriation a word? Inf- uh, Inf- uh, it, that was fury. That was. Fury. I don't know if infuriate, infuriation. I feel like it may be today. It is. <laughs> today, this is our world. This We're adults. Our... We can do whatever we want. We're just living in we it. We pay taxes. We unfortunately do. <laughs> it's a hot sip of tea in every sense of the word. <laughs> Mine's a hot, hot chocolate. Hot sip of chocolate. chocolate. Hello, friends. I'm fucking here with my best friend, Lindsay Pierce. <laughs> Lindsay has a Pierce, y'all. Lindsay has a Pierce. <laughs> and we are eating. And dealing with this menace of a dog. Yes. Daisy uh, is very jealous that. She's jealous because we have a lot of snacks. Snacks and attention. I know. Mm-hmm. I know, baby. We all know that, she knows that Daisy is the second her. co-host of this show. Yes, mm-hmm. right. <laughs> Thank you. We were, I just recorded one with Gabe the other day, and she was like, I don't understand why you both won't talk to me. <laughs> she also knows when we talk about her. Oh, yeah. She hears her name, and then she hears us saying things, and she's like, her ears. I think she also knows, like, she. And I know when yeah. she hears us referencing her with pronouns, mm-hmm. I think she knows when it's her, she, her. Yeah, because I, I think we have a slight, like... <laughs> It's because Daisy's woke. <laughs> Daisy's She's with wo- it. Daisy's an ally. <laughs> and also, I think every time we talk about her, there's probably always an inflection of this fucking dog. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I get it. <laughs> I'm a menace. You can't see this, but she's Emily's hand is out on the coffee table, and Daisy has just laid her head across the hand. And she's not sitting. She's standing, staring. Into your soul. It, Kind of. She's staring at me. She's staring at my food. She's staring. She's staring at you all. <laughs> I would like. I would like the audience and everybody's gorgeous ears that are listening <laughs> to understand that I feed this dog. She y'all. She gets she's two not starving. <laughs> gorgeous square meals a day, Just and I had to. Her. My mother in law. My mother in law and I had to inject this dog with three hundred milligrams of fluids for two weeks, and so the she, doctors were very pleased. So I know she's fucking healthy. Also. Because this hungry, hungry hippo decided she was starving. Stop it. Decided she was starving and tipped over a trash can and ate tinfoil. That's what you get. The one time I make fucking meatballs. (laughs) The one time. The one I was like, well, I guess I'm never making meatballs again. (laughs) Damn you, HelloFresh. Please be a sponsor. Don't. You can't have those potato chips, you naughty bitch. No. Literally. Um, you keep talking. I'm going to put the potatoes up because she can't. She literally cannot eat those. No, she has no self-control. Technically, neither can I, but here I am. Nothing has told me that I can't until proven otherwise. Yeah. I'm sure there's some medical would, journal out there being like, you've ingested a lot of 
lot of those in your Emily, life. Emily has not found out that she can't have nightshades, but Lindsay knows that she can't. What are Lindsay nightshades? Does. Nightshades are tomatoes, potatoes. Oh, my therapist is texting me. Tomatoes, potatoes. <laughs> Greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes. Um, it's a good thing my therapist is texting me while we do this podcast about loneliness. Um, <laughs> anybody else's therapist out there uh, text you? If you are, and I, I, I know I can't see you, but just raise your hand. Raise your hand. We love, we love a texting therapist. Um, nightshades are tomatoes, potatoes, chili pepper, bell peppers. Oh, bell um, peppers too? Any sort of pepper, chili, poblano, jalapeno. For God's sake, Daisy, it's like we're drawing and quartering you. Um, <laughs> and uh, eggplant. Um, but like yams and sweet potatoes are not in that category. It's okay. just a specific genus of uh, like veg and, oh. and like root vegetable um it just gives me a lot of acid I get yeah back and I'm, I'm burping now because I've eaten these potatoes um technically I don't think onions and chives are in it and they might be green onions might be in there I'm not sure but I just have I have That's a sensitive why like, stomach when it comes to nightshade like mm. if I have a lot of tomato sauce yeah. sometimes it it can give me oh. a bit of grief oh absolutely. because it's super acidic yeah um but like garlic like, kills me if it's yeah. like if it's not but garlic's on a nightshade yeah. Really? Mm-mm. That surprises me. No. Not from not from what I know. I could be completely wrong and people are probably out there going like, You're fucking wrong. But I don't And know. if you're saying that That's fine too. Look at the news, friends. There's a lot going on. This is not don't you know die what? on this hill. And you know what? Just message me online and be like, Hey, just heads up. Oh, Google it. You're wrong. And I'll be like, Thank you for letting me know. Thank I you. will be better next time. Because when you do better. If anything, maybe you know better, Daisy's better. Googled it and that's why she's making such noises. Daisy's pretending like she's she's making noises like she's snoring and yet she's fully awake. Um, but anyway, <laughs> here we are. So Lindsay. Ugh. <laughs> 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 Food in my throat. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> We've never done this before. No. Of all the things that we've done together. I also feel we've very- We've never done a video together. True. We've never done- We've, we've like vlogged. We've like vlog- yes, that's true. But we've never done a video together. Yeah. We've like, we've vlogged at the same time, like mm-hmm. mirror vlogs. And then, but we've never done a podcast. I feel like we're like on talk radio. We've also never, like, I don't think we've ever technically sang together. Mm-mm. Which is wild to me. Which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is incorrect. Which is just downright wrong. And we're just gonna be sipping the whole time. So sorry with anybody that's got the slurp, the slurp, yeah, what, didn't you Miso- eat? misophonia. Yeah, anybody that doesn't like the sound of mastication, the sound of like chewing, and the sound of your masseters working in your <laughs> mouth. I'll try to cut as much of it out. Yeah, I'll do my best. But I did a I did a vlog recently and was like, I realized that it was not a mukbang, but like I was yeah. eating in it while I was talking. And sometimes I don't completely close my mouth, or sometimes I mm-hmm. like. I'm talking and I cover my mouth, but you can still hear the sound of my me chewing. And I just like did like a type, like a type screen of like, hey, just a heads up, there's a slurp in the first clip, and then at the, the last yeah. ten minutes of the vlog or me sitting and eating and talking and drinking tea. This is not for you. Like, don't even stress. But sometimes all that people need to know is that it's coming. Yeah, and that they just need to be aware. And I, I think someone, I think there was like one or two people in the comments that were like, they were like, "Hey, thanks for the heads up," because it was, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But like knowing that it was, coming yeah, was enough. It's like it's like you don't need a jump scare for something that's unnecessary. Like it's just like, but for some people, misophonia is like, oh an yeah, extreme, I'm saying like, like if, it's trigger. like if yeah. someone can like tell be you like, ahead of time, hey, just letting you know it might be coming, and you're like, yeah, it's okay, it's not going to be bad. as bad. Yeah. yeah, or they can turn the volume down. You know, or they can speed it up. They can yeah, speed or up they the, can just like they're the like, okay, I'll go to the next part of the video. Yeah, easy. It's not. It's not hard to be decent. It's not. It's not hard to be considerate. I think I. I think I kind of adjusted it too, because I was like, oh, that's a habit I didn't know I had, and I'm not crazy about it. Like so making noises when you eat. I. It was when I would. It was the first time I started really editing videos. Mm, God, don't and you I, learn so much about yourself? Like, You're like, Jesus like, God Christ! Damn it, that's my face. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, oh, there's, well, there's I, so much of me. Oh my God, the the amount of ums. I was like, oh, I didn't realize I said um so much. I say um so much, I but then like, I thought I would say like more. I say I it's a West Coast thing. I say um, like you know, like yeah, like yeah, I yeah, have yeah, like yeah, a yeah, phrase, yeah. and I'm like, oh, there totally. it is. So much so that I would see I wouldn't even be watching the video when I was like really in the depths of editing um yeah. when I was <laughs> my OG wanders out there when I was wander blush back in the I day found Emily. Um, I found Emily on YouTube and I was like I hope this girl would be my friend one day <laughs> and then uh, here we are and uh Lindsay's staying in my home <laughs> on um, my layoff <laughs> on, yes. 
I, I, I would like, I would just look at the audio and I could, it was like the same kind of pattern that I was like, oh, I'll just clip that out. Cause I know that that's like, yeah. that's my um sentence. But I realized I would lick the side of my mouth. It was like, <gasps> a, isn't that weird? I would always go weird and i'm like you didn't even realize you did no and i don't know if i still do it i might and you might and now you might go oh she's i don't think i've ever noticed that but i think i do it when i'm in like deep thought shush you you're fine come here put me down put me down no i don't know why she's just not maybe it's because i'll just i'll take our cookies away you know what daisy if you can't if you can't have a good time then we won't have a good time (laughs) she's looking around like what have i done what have i done if we're gonna cry about it it's not worth it you know it's not worth it. It's Lindsay just is just full on auntie mode. Here. It's just cookies. We're not. We're not having a breakdown over panettone and speculos. <laughs> but like, we period. could. We could. We Listen, could. stranger Listen. things have occurred. <laughs> um. So yeah, I would notice that, and I was just like, oh, fuck. isn't that so I wild? Like, what? I was like, when does it happen? And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, it's when I'm in thought of something, and it's like, yeah. it's like a tick of. Oh, I don't know if it's quite – I don't know if that's the right thing to say, but it's, like, it's definitely a, no, a mannerism. I think, I think I, yeah, I would say a mannerism with a tick. That's not – ticks don't – I don't think only apply to people with, like um, – Is it Tourette's in Like Tourette's, yeah. And I think I asked Gabe, I was like, do I, do I do this? He's like, I've never noticed it. But I was like, I sure as hell noticed it. <laughs> yeah, and that's so wild. Human Human experience is so varied and bonkers in that way. So, Linz. Yeah. What makes you, what makes you fucking lonely? Listen, what makes you lonely? <laughs> what makes me lonely? Um, myself a lot of the time, I think. Oh, speak um, on it. Gosh, I mean that's such a loaded question. Um, I'm I'm an isolator. Mm-hmm. I I have always been that way. Um, I was like that as a child. Um, I'm one of those introverts that is extroverted sometimes with the right people the yeah. people that I choose to be close with um I can have these extroverted moments but or like moments of total abandon and joy um my mom would always say that I had to plug into the wall I would always need to close the door and draw or read or you know write mm. or do something to kind of bring me back to me and just for myself and I still do that now um, but unfortunately, now that I'm older and I know all of these things, especially in my 20s, my mid-20s, I would, um, you know, you turn to vices, you turn to drink, you turn yeah. to love relationships, draw, you know, whatever it is, and and it can manifest in any way, shopping, you know, and it's not always like addictive behavior. It can it can just be self-sabotaging yeah. practices that you might not even be completely aware of self-sabotaging and like, <laughs> there's the like, and, <laughs> and like fucking you up. Or creating patterns that are immovable at the time, at mm-hmm. least. Um, yeah, I think I think I am always my own worst enemy because I think individuals know every. They think I shouldn't say no, but they think that they know everything about themselves because they know the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right? Yeah, you know the dirtiest parts of your soul and the meanest, ugliest parts mm. of your soul. And you remember all those you, moments all the sh- that you were unkind. All the shit you did and-, and all the stuff and you carry that baggage with you even though forgive yourself and move on because yeah. we, oh, we are meant to grow, we are meant to change, we are meant to make mistakes And because when you know better, you do better. But I think, you know, I think becoming aware of yourself and of the, the isolation triggers, I think – that's a that's a big power move and I've only gotten better at that through sobriety, through mm. therapy, through becoming more aware of myself, becoming okay with being lonely mm. because I don't think lonely is a, is necessarily a negative thing. I think that human beings are lonely as a whole for many reasons, whether you are, you know, in a metropolis where it's hard to make friends and you kind of can be in the middle of a crowd and absolutely feel Mm -hmm. completely isolated or, you know, like a a drop in the ocean, which can, for some people and for me as well, sometimes that makes me feel really, really calmed. Sometimes Mm. that's really comforting. And then sometimes I'm like, but I actually need to be this like important, not important, but this actualized, realized individual with like purpose in this world. Mm -hmm. When it comes to loneliness, I, I always try to 
respect the dichotomy of it and the kind of two sides of the same coin where loneliness can be a really beautiful thing. And I think um, I'm reading this book right now called um, The Lonely City, Mm. and it's about New York specifically and um, how loneliness can sometimes become a thing of – or can become a a behavior pattern where you have to be in a relationship or you have to have friends and make sure that you're not lonely rather than just sitting with yourself and being – by yourself and the beauty that can come from lo- not isolation but loneliness. Yeah. Um lonely doesn't mean you're alone. Um and I know for me who has struggled with codependency patterns and you know um l- love confusion and miss uh what's the word I'm looking for? Um miscalculated um shows of love. I think sometimes being okay with being by myself is the most healthy thing that I can do. Yeah. Um, but that also comes from the privilege of being an extremely busy person. Yeah. So it's, it's so individual. Yeah. But those, those are my answers, I think. Cause I'm I, in that busyness. I can find extreme loneliness. Like, am I busy? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. But. Cause you're able to avoid the thought of totally and you're able to do, but then, but then eventually, you know, your, your car starts running out of gas Mm -hmm. and you're, and you have nothing, you know, and when uh, me currently being on tour, um, right now I'm on a layoff, but being on tour, I love my cast. I love my company. It is the most incredible group of people, but it's all you have sometimes. And then you're so far away from like you Mm -hmm. and, and, and my mom and my, and Tyler and And what feels like home, my best friends. Yeah. Yeah. My closest people and the people that are in reality and that know me best, Ronnie, you've known me for 14 years, you know, and, and there's so many people that know me better than I know myself. And sometimes you shy away from those people because you just don't want either tough love or you just don't want a spotlight on it. You just kind of want to be in it. Yeah. Um, but even being, you know, in a cast of like twenty some odd people, you and they're all that you have, it feels lonely. It yeah. feels almost like you're off at boarding school or something. Yeah. Gabe was saying like the same we mm-hmm. when we interviewed when I, when I interviewed him the other day, yeah. he was saying so much of the same thing where he's just like, you know, it's you, the most incredible blessing. Yeah. It's also it's, it's also just a weird it, thing. He's like, it's this crazy thing where and I hadn't thought about it like this before. He was just like He's like, we experience loneliness in such different ways because, like, yes, I'm going to, like, my dream job, Mm -hmm. but, like, even on my worst day – and he's like, and the job helps me get through the day because it's it's my favorite part of the day sometimes. But he's like, but there are days when, like – I'd rather be here than anywhere else. Exactly. And then he's like, but there would be days where, like, I'm – I have to put on such a mask just to to get to my favorite part of the day around people. And he's like, and then I thought, how many other people are, like, how many masks are are people doing? And it's like, oh, we're all lonely together. And But it's like sometimes we're just – because sometimes it can feel like a bummer to be like, I'm lonely. But I I was listening to another podcast today where it was just like, the more we talk about these things – the less icky it will say to be yeah. like, I'm super lonely today. It's like, almost like a healthy desensitization. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's not – It's it like shame. Yeah, it's it like, just, just like name it, mm-hmm. name it, shed a light, and keep going. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I agree with, with that that thing of – that experience of looking around and being like, how many other people mm-hmm. are going through exactly me? And it makes me think of that kind of like trend on TikTok where you find – and I, I think TikTok is a – it, it's I, the I best never, worst thing. I yeah, think like I never to know society. what to, ha- to know about. And it. I'm when I say like I'm so close to just deleting everything yeah. off of social media because it's just a, become it's become such an oversaturated market, yeah. and I feel like there's just no privacy anymore. And um, even if you choose to only show bits and pieces, and 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 you have, I I can say, and I feel like we both can echo this that it, we just have the most amazing online communities for yes, we do like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time. Mm-hmm. Just we've curated these really beautiful, loving, warm spaces. Like I, someone someone on YouTube called it a bird's nest, just a warm little Ooh, nest. I love that. Like just a bunch of little birds just like can come home and mm. and just be in a fluffy little nest for a little while and just have a sip of peace. You know. Yeah. Um. And that's that's what you would hope to create is is these safe spaces where people that maybe don't have 
as much outreach yeah. or they come home and they just don't want to feel like they're alone. So mm-hmm. they open up their computer and click a video and feel like they're hanging out with a friend. That's yeah. what I do with your videos a lot of the time. That's the same with Sometimes yours. Sometimes I go back to your like... old videos and I just like watch you decorate your house and I'm like, that looks so good, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so good. But that that feeling, going back to Gabe's experience, that, that trend on TikTok and this like oversaturated market you know the joke of okay the for you page needs to be stop being a little for me you know and you're like jesus christ this is so annoying it's a vacuum at the same time there's a trend where you'll go into the comment section and people will say will be saying things like oh i've never had an original thought (laughs) yeah which at first made me feel attacked and it made me feel nervous because i think there's a big pressure in specifically our industry but i think in the world at large as well as the online community to be the only person that's oh ever had a God. thought and to be the only, like the first person to originate to, this to idea. have originated an idea or to have found a band or to start a trend or yeah. so to, much just pressure. Be, to just be like right all the time. Yeah. And I don't think that that's conducive to a healthy relationship with those around you as well as with yourself. Cause I think that that breeds perfectionism, which breeds anxiety mm-hmm. and shame and comparison, which we all know is the thief of anything joyful. Yeah. And, it just steals it away in the night and you wake up completely empty and a shell of yourself. Yeah, and I'm constantly at war with comparison. Yeah, like, always. Like I'm like I'm like okay, battles at 2. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> like, let me get see my you there. Up. Yeah, and that but that trend of I've never had an original thought then becomes to me it has become it has turned into this almost introspective experience where I go, "Oh my god." everybody's experiencing the same fucking thing as me and no one is individual and no one Mm. no one knows that everyone else is going through the same thing and has no fucking idea what they're doing yeah and no one's thinking about me and that is such a relief yeah it's very philosophical everyone is feeling the same thing i am Mm -hmm. everyone has no idea what the fuck they're doing no one's thinking about me and judging me on what I'm doing or thinking, unless for some reason they decide to go and have a judgment. Yeah. Which is like energy. Yeah. Energy poorly, spent. Energy poorly spent, but, but you know, bless the fuck up, I guess. Yeah. I Thank you for the engagement. I get, yeah, I guess, but also <laughs> I don't give, I don't want engagement. Yeah. If I wanted engagement, I wouldn't have left mine. <laughs> like, bless you if you're listening. <laughs> like, bless you if you're listening, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I just like, come on. I... I just really do feel, and that's that's that comforting thing that I well, feel, I feeling like I'm just a speck of dust in the sky. Mm. That's where I get that comforting feeling of, I'm doing I'm doing everything right by me right now. Yeah, I'm doing everything just fine. I don't need to make sure that I do my taxes exactly perfectly, and I and if I don't do it on this day on this time, I'm a fuck up, and everyone's gonna know that I'm a fraud. Mm. Or if I, if I spent too much on this I'm a piece of shit and I don't follow my own yeah. rules or yeah. if I don't if I don't read the 60 books I swore I was going to read this year people are going to trust me less yeah and trust my opinion less no one gives a fuck nobody cares nobody gives a flying fuck I know. not one person and the people that do get a life <laughs> with love and tenderness and total firmness get a fucking life if you are so wrapped up in caring about what I do or do not do, baby, to have an opinion on it, to I to have an opinion, you, then to type I'm it. Out, I'm out here ascend. living my life and doing my best. I would never kick down your door and be like, "You're making your eggs wrong, you piece of shit." Like, <laughs> what on earth? You know what I mean? It's just I need to go on a t-shirt. Uh, you're making, you're making your, your eggs wrong, you piece of shit. shit. <laughs> like, it's just it's it's just such a wild thing, and I think. I think that's why I have such I have such love and qualm with social media as a whole because the oversaturated market there's too many windows. Mm. All these phones are just windows yeah. into people's lives, and then people become these peeping toms and these judgy Janets. You know what I mean? Oh, and the they, voyeurism is yeah, and they they're hi. peering into these windows, going, "I wouldn't do it like that." Meanwhile, they're out in the fucking rain, <laughs> staring into your window into yeah. your life that you're doing your best with. Being like, fuck you. Or they're they're walking by your storefront and going, That's great. And that's too much. We weren't yeah. we weren't designed to be scrolling past one person sobbing because their dog has been hit by a car because it ran away. And then 
a dog, a canine being retired from the police force and all the policemen are sobbing. I couldn't handle that I, one. Devastating. And then, and then someone graduating and being the first person in their, you know, in their line, in their generation to graduate from college or someone getting broken up with and finding out that they're cheating and confronting them on TikTok. And then like, it's just, it's, yeah. we were not meant, I wasn't meant to see all of these faces no. all the time. Yeah. I wasn't meant to know all, quote unquote, know all of these things, worry about all these things, gossipy, gossipy, and then move on with my life. Yeah. As and if, then as completely if, forget about the it's things like that you reality television. Yeah. It's just, it's just one of those. And I don't, I have no qualm if that, if that is the best thing about someone else's life is like really enjoying online life and and blogging and all of these things. Yeah. But the more and more I feel like I look into other people's windows, the less and less I clean my own mm. and the less and less I step outside my own door. Yeah. And the less and less I live my own life because I'm too busy watching other people live theirs mm. and going – why don't I have a life to live? Bitch, you do. Go put your <laughs> shoes on. Go outside. Put your shoes on, girl. Put your shoes on. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, right, Daze? Speak on it. She's like, speak on shoes. I probably have to poop soon. <laughs> but anyway, that's my tangent. Oh, I love it, though. Because, I mean, I feel like we've had so many of these conversations where it's just like, it's such a, it's so, okay, the, the thought process is like, I don't even know where to start. Time. Because it's like, the idea of connection so we want it so bad. we want we're desperate for it we're Which desperate is, i think to- also why we have negative like interactions online because mm. people just want to yell yeah and then how many times have i mean not to, sorry i don't mean to derail you but i've had people like yell at me online like yeah. oh, are you okay do you yeah. need anything and they go i'm not okay because this happened and this happened i'm like oh you just need someone today yeah and it has nothing to do with me it rarely ever does yeah for and real if it does or, Bless, I guess. Let me live rent free in that brain. <laughs> anyway, keep going. I know you. I. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm. Every time you tell me that, I'm like, oh my god, she's so gracious. I don't think I'd be able to like see through that. I'd be like, ow. Sometimes I also just fucking block them because yeah. Why? Why the hell would I let someone into my house if they're just gonna yell at me? Yeah, I know. I've, and I've then people would be like, why do too. you? Why are you? Why do you mute these people? Why do you block these people? Because I don't deserve to be they're screamed rude. at. Because it's my space. Yeah. I didn't ask for X amount. Am I grateful? Do I love my community? Oh my God, yeah. yeah. But if someone's going to come in and break and, conditions and straight up disrespect me and and be dedicated to misunderstanding me, yeah. Bye. There's the door. There's the door, bitch. Like absolutely not. Because I would. Would I ever let someone do that in in my presence to someone else? No. no. Absolutely so I not. Let someone do it to me. No. Never. Um, Baby, we're fine. We're not actually upset. Oh God, she's cute. Oh, I hope that goes. Stop away. it. Yeah. Stop. She's like, guys, I feel like I'm waving through a window. (laughs) No, but it's like humans, we have such a desire to connect. Yes. And especially during this time where it's like, especially during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic where all we had was these phones. And and especially and with like God. yeah thank and when I wouldn't have, when I wouldn't like, have been able to see you if we weren't facetiming all the time oh my god and like and even just sending like bits of joy through like a video to be like us this is us LOL. <laughs> like it's lol this is us this is us at 80 in paris <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh i can only imagine i, know, I can't wait when, when, all the, when all of our men die <laughs> and we're living we're on living for on. Years, and years. years and years on facebook before like social media really kicked off i had like a thousand quote unquote friends i'm like i don't know this many no. people like my brother would go how do you have that many friends and i'm like i, I don't. don't it's like i don't i can name 50 <laughs> people that i know closely off the top of my head right now and i think 50 is where i would have to sit back and think yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah okay wait a second it's like oh yeah me? i know 50 people and then you go and then you're like oh i'm only once at 30 I, once i got to like 50 i'd be like okay now what about cast members? Yeah, what about my family, my legal team, like what yeah. are the people that I work with every day. Like what do I? Yeah, we don't we don't know that many people. Like our cavemen, lizard brains. Our societies were only made for us to know and and interact with up to two hundred people in a village at a mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. and they all worked as like one work, working amoeba. Yeah. And and now here we are living in New York, you know, or or people going on with, tour or people living in with LA millions or, of followers. Where you're like, I don't know, how do you? I don't even. And I and when I say, you just have to shut it down. When I say that I am not complaining about 
incredible community being built online. I don't, I don't wake up and go on Instagram or in, go on Instagram during the day and see people commenting whatever they want to comment and go, yeah. God, I hate this. I would just delete the app. I would yeah. never go back on again. That's not what I'm saying at all. I just think there's such a disconnect in this desire for connection. Yeah. And people think that connection is connection, whether it's negative or positive. Yeah. But it's actually, like the idea of free speech. It's just yeah. like, no, you can't just say anything when you want. I, yeah, and when be actually like, this, this water on these rocks has frozen and now it's breaking rocks apart. Yeah. And everyone's like, why is our society fissuring and why is it breaking? And it's because nobody knows each other anymore. Yeah. There's a way to make yeah. that balance happen, but – I don't think we found it. I don't think we're going to find it for some time. No. Not not as a not as a collective. No. If anything, I think more people are starting to put down physical boundaries in their life of like yes. how to like be like, "Hey, I want to heal some ancestral fucking damage, so yeah. I'm going to make some boundaries." It stops with me. It stops yeah. with me. Yeah. And and that's hard enough as it is. At least for me, I can only speak for myself where it's like when I put down boundaries, I'm like, "Okay, these are the areas in my life <laughs> that I can do it yeah. slowly because I'm such a people pleaser. Of course. And <laughs> I'm telling you today how I did it with my band leader. I was just like, I was like, I laid down a boundary today and I was shaking the whole yeah, yes, time. Of course. Literally <laughs> like, 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 I was like, doing my, I was doing my brows like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> just like taking a sip and you're just trembling out of your cup. Just like, oh. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it, that's, that's so real. And, and the thing is, is, no one's doing anything right. No one's doing every, everything perfectly. No and nobody's doing, looking at us. Nobody's no watching. One's looking. Uh, yeah, I think I think you're you're spot on. And and not everyone's gonna move and grow and and be 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 active or use their voice or their resources or learn and 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 pivot. And mm-hmm. you know, not everyone and, and unlearn. Not everyone is gonna move at the same pace or in the same way as you. No, yeah. And there was so there's just been so much judgment or leering or filling in the blanks of people's lives that you don't see outside of what they show you yeah and until someone really shows you who they are and there's like blunt evidence and you can draw your own conclusions from that I think you just gotta mind your own business and you don't if you get a bad juju feeling about someone online just follow that gut follow you don't you don't have to be near them you can block them if you want I've seen people I've seen people online I, I I couldn't tell you like a specific name, but I've seen people on multiple different social media platforms talking about, you know, a, a drama with this person or a drama with that person. And I, and I'll see comments going, seeing, seeing this person online really triggered me and I had to block them so that I didn't see them anymore. And I was mm. like, and what an incredible way to be like, you go over there and you play in your playpen, but I can't play at this playground. Yeah. So I'm going to like make sure that I don't come to this playground anymore. And when I do come to this playground, you're not going to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, if anything, I feel like that's such a that's sign of you like. you can do. And it's such a, it's such like a, a personalized revolution against mm-hmm. like the patriarchy because it's like, it's like, no, we don't all have to play nice. With no. each other, we can no. play. We can be kind and civil. I and also don't need to constantly announce my departure from people's lives. I can just exit. I can just peace out. People, people ask me, you know, why aren't you on Twitter? Where's your Twitter? And I said because it wasn't serving me. It was really stressful. Um, I didn't. I didn't go on Twitter for anything except to maybe see my friends' private tweets, and then if people wanted to tag me in something that, yeah. like a picture that they had drawn or something, like I wanted that engagement. But it, it turned it, it was turning into a, a war zone over there and yeah, it's... and I, I didn't feel the need to be like, Bye, I'm leaving. I just deactivated it. I don't even I don't even know if deactivation means delete. Yeah. I just deactivated it, deleted the app off my phone and 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 then on Instagram I was like for the people asking. Yeah. And, and there were a good handful, there were a good many who were like, Where are you on Twitter? And I said, I oh, I just didn't I'll just make a general announcement. I just didn't I didn't feel the need to be like Bye, I'm leaving and make it a whole thing because me leaving was for me and me only, not yeah. not about a grand gesture of fuck off, I'm leaving the internet. Like yeah. it just it doesn't need to be that dramatic. And what's funny is like the um, and it somehow I don't need that I don't need it the spotlight that is supposed to be on specific things to suddenly turn to me and my departure from yes, Twitter. Yes, from Twitter. I'm like, I just don't who cares? And it's like Oh no, another white girl off Twitter. <laughs> like but it's no, like no. also like why is that surprising? Because it's just like we all know that t- 
for years people have known that Twitter is a space where like and it's a dying space. It's a dying space that like people are just cruel. Like they're just they yeah particularly I think it's one of the like ones. yeah. And I, I would say TikTok and Twitter are the meanest. Yeah, for sure. and I was just like I don't. Instagram just feels like a really like really fun like photo bucket. Remember yeah. photo bucket <laughs> or yeah. like like photo bucket for MySpace. Shout out to the other babies out there who were born around the same time as Emily and I. <laughs> I mean, but, like, I just kept thinking I was like, who's on, who's on the or, like, shutter, or like Shutterfly? Like, yes. yeah, it just reminds me of like having, and I guess with the stories, like I was never a chap, a, a chap snap, a Snapchat person. I Clearly, wasn't either, no. I was not a, I was not a chat snap, a Snapchat person. But you watch know, that Instagram. Watch that app that called. Is. I wasn't much of a vine. I chat. wasn't much of a vine person. No, either. I wasn't a vine I, person. I enjoyed it for the giggles, but you know, I will watch vine compilations to same. get serotonin. My favorite thing about vine compilations is the tangent on YouTube is that it's like vine compilations that brought my father back from the dead, like things <laughs> like like vine compilations that got me through my grandmother's funeral, like things like that. And you're like, why is the internet like this? And it just kills me. It's so Ugh. funny. And the internet really can be like an incredible, collaborative, creative, hilarious space. Yeah. And I love it for all of those things. And I can't say that I hate it at all. I can just say that there are things that are not for me and yeah. I do my best. It's just hard to bob and weave through the rain sometimes. Yeah, you, can't, you can't dodge the raindrops. There are so many times where I'm like, oh, God, I just need I need a huge detox. Yeah. And I need to – if I could just learn – I've said this time and time again, but I'm like, well – it's probably almost impossible to do it because literally the way that the apps were created and how the algorithm works, it's it's meant to keep you there. Yeah. It works our lizard brain to be like, mm-hmm. nope, you're addicted now. Yeah. And like I'm like, if I could – because I have so many ideas and creative ideas that I want to create. Yeah. But I just get lost in, in the scroll. Yeah. That I'm like, if I could just like – I'm like – if there was a way, because I'm, I have a very hard time like self-regulating. Like, okay, Emily, it times up. Like, I'm yeah. like, no, I'm I, five more minutes, five yeah, more minutes, yeah. and like, yeah, so absolutely. long. And I'm like, God, if I had just taken that time that I was scrolling to make something of the good ideas that I had, that I yeah. at least who cares who watched it? I like ex- them. Or to just exist. Or to just exist. Um, because we did before without all of this. You know? No. Yeah. Like no, yeah. Uh, yeah, like we, I used to do so many things, and it's not. I couldn't tell you. I think we were talking about this the other day. I couldn't tell you the last time I stopped analog testing, texting, where I had mm. to click a, a number multiple times to get a letter to, to get B one two to three. get B, and then and then like how fast <laughs> my fingers would have to move to, yes. to send out a single text, and I only had fifty texts a month. You know what I, I mean? Yeah. I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you when I went from my BlackBerry to my Android in LA after Glee Project and then and then on the Android having Twitter. I remember that being a thing with Glee Project. Did you Project. have a flip? Did you have like – My mm-hmm. Android, no. Oh, that's cute. No. And my BlackBerry wasn't that either. My BlackBerry was just more of like a like a keyboard text. Um, but that was, that was all that phones were for, was yeah. calling and messaging, sort of. It was mostly calling. Yeah. And then – and we all had them in light of like yeah. school shootings that were happening yes, because absolutely. of the danger of there of yeah. like you know just going to school just going to school and i got i got my first phone when i was 14 going to my 8th grade dc trip because it was the mm-hmm. first time i was going to be away from home for longer than a week and, absolutely and i needed a way to talk to my parents so they got me a little like pink flip phone this was in cute this is in like maybe 2005 Something like that, two thousand four, something. My and my my first phone was my mom's Nokia that she yeah, was like, was, take this during the school. Yeah, it was my mom's <laughs> old phone, and my mom got a new phone. And but I I was I was talking about this with you, and I think about um that guy that I was speaking to in Toronto, mm-hmm. who has no social media. Yeah, and I found that mind blowing. And anyway, I'll I'll get to that in a second because yeah. it connects to all of this. But I was talking, I think, to both of you separately about. I cannot tell you the moment when I completely acclimated mm. to this smartphone. Mm. And said it just happened so gradually and, and insidiously, which is how it's supposed to happen. Oh, That's yeah. what it's designed to do is is um, infiltrate. It's and like, almost make it's, it impossible it's an, to use something else. Yeah. It's, it's like an alien invasion and, and makes me think of books like The Host or mm-hmm. – 
like it, you know, w- without even realizing suddenly we've become slaves to the machine, you know, and, yeah. and we wake up one day and you kind of, it's like coming out of the matrix. You just have no idea when it's happened. And, and I was talking to this guy in, in Toronto when I was there um, on tour and he was from Ireland and he had no social media. He has a Facebook and a LinkedIn. And obviously this, this guy's in finance. He's yeah. Really, He's at what we would jokingly call like a muggle. Yeah. <laughs> but he has like a whole complicated, obviously like, and everybody does. Everybody yeah. has a whole complicated in life of their own with, you know, bank account numbers and, and, and things. Social security to, cards. You know, entire contact sheets in their phones of people that, you know, they got to call their mom on this day and blah, blah, blah. And um, speaking, speaking of, of, I need to call my mom. <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> I, like, I need to call my dad. It's like, I need um, to do but that. It's, I'll, I'll see them in a week, so it'll be fine. <laughs> um, they'll get a call every single day. I'll be staying in my parents' house. and um. <laughs> And I found it really fascinating, and I was like, you have no social media. And he was like, no, I can't stand it. Oh. And I was like, have you ever had any? And he said, no. I had a Facebook for a while, and that's not even really a thing anymore that I use. And I had it in college. And there were, like, some other platforms that they used in the U.K., kind of like college connection platforms mm-hmm. just yeah. for their schooling. But he just seemed so completely detached from that, and I w- he was like, "What about you?" And I, you're like, "Uh." Well, and we were talking here behind about, the ear. Yeah. And I, well, I was t- no, it wasn't even. I wasn't even like, let me like let you down gently. I said, "Well, you know, yeah. it's interesting you ask because I never asked for X amount of followers yeah. or a blue check mark, or I couldn't even tell you why or when that happened. Yeah. To my account, and <laughs> and um, Daisy is, do- is doing? doing something to this ball. And I can up. just I can just hear her little paws going. She's just trying to rip this ball apart, and um, you know I said it's interesting because it used to not feel like it was so important in the industry, and then oh yeah, and then social media sort it was like video killed the radio star, mm-hmm. and then YouTube killed the video. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like YouTube killed the video, and then this ki- and Netflix killed the blockbuster, and you know like uh, audiobooks and books online killed the Barnes and Noble, killed the Borders, and and it was just like. It's such a domino effect, yeah. And and I for said, sure. and I don't know when it started being a thing to that the more pull that you have mm-hmm. online means that you are more buying power. You, yeah, you offer more buying power, and I don't necessarily know if that's true in my case or in every case. But I have seen, and it's not. I don't say this with any jealousy. It's just an observation. Yeah, where I see people who have no experience in the industries that they're sort of thrown into like these TikTok people that have incredible voices, but they've never been trained to be in Do eight on shows stage. A week. Yeah. No, but like be, be on yeah. stage and be on tour and performing like, and then people film them on these stages and they're, they're not flopping, but they, they don't have the ability or the training or, or like the bolstering and support that they need in order to give the product that mm. they deserve to be giving because yeah. they're great. Yeah. But people just want that fast money, that fast name, and they throw yeah. these people out there for vitriol and ridicule, and yeah. pe- and then they get filmed, and then it gets put online, and people are like, "This, I knew this person fucking sucked live." It was all out of tune. Like, no, actually, pop stars used to be literally trained, yeah, to do what they did, like in sync. Thousands of shows before hours they got to a big stage, hours training and, and rehearsing and dancing together. And money and not given to them. No, Destiny's Child, like mm-hmm. Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Aaliyah, like all of these people were fucking trained yeah. to do what they did. Lady Gaga mm-hmm. trained herself. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean that these people don't have the same ability to do so, but there is such a hard, fast thing. Yeah. Like fast and furious, quick money, quick fix quick diet pill, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, it's that energy of got to get it done now, got to get it done fast because the next hot commodity is going to come and you're going to be nothing. Exactly. And I just, it's such an unsustainable yeah. thing for our society at large because then people, it's like fast their, fashion of well, people. Uh, yeah. It's and like, like, and people see their slow, their slow journey to their own definition of mm-hmm. success and go, I'm not doing anything right. Oh, that's exactly how I feel. And that's absolutely yeah. not true. I mean, our our good, like, uh, just our good, beautiful Andre de Shield said it best was the, the fastest way to get anywhere is slowly. Oh, and I, I couldn't agree with it more. And people, I have people online tell me, 
you know, it's so amazing to see you thrive from Glee to Broadway. And I'm like, oh, there was 11 years in there where I was busting my ass. And and people go, I didn't know you did Grey's Anatomy. Or I didn't know you did an entire series called Recovery Road. Or I didn't know, you know, you were on Drop Dead Diva. Or I didn't know you did this movie with with Sony Pictures. Or I didn't know that you were trudging your car. Jorge Garcia from Lost and Kevin Hart and, you know, Whitney Cummings. Like, and then Kaylee Cuoco. And then busting your ass through L.A. and driving from – Little theater to little theater to do all the Being a hostess shows. And, yeah. and doing Rockwell Table and, sh- yeah. and stage shows and burlesque shows and, you know, and ship jobs, which are all of those things are just as fucking valid yeah. as being a series regular, as being a Broadway star, as being this, that, or the other, West End, whatever the fuck. All of those things are just as nuanced and important and somewhere along the line we have – determined what is good enough and what isn't oh yeah and I would some of the best work I've ever done and some of the most incredible times in my career I've had have been outside of these large arenas yeah not because these large arenas can't fulfill me they're incredible and I'm so grateful and I will always be grateful to be even considered yeah to 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 be allowed to come in but even in that statement alone I am feeding elitism yeah even in that statement alone, I'm mm-hmm. going to even be considered to be led into the Broadway community or to even be considered to be this, that, or the other. I know how hard all of these people work. I know yeah. how hard I work tirelessly. Yeah. Tears, blood, sweat, like skin. Spasms. Skin, sp- spasms. <laughs> injuries. Yeah. Like, I mean, hours upon hours. I was just talking to you about a situation where I was dating someone for a, like it, very gently for a split second in time. And I had nothing to give that person because I yeah. had no time because yeah. I was playing Elphaba and because I was going on tour. Yeah. I had no time. There was no – You barely had time for yourself. I had – I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. And I would sit at home and I would cry because I just had nothing left of myself. And I was not resentful of that. It was just the fact of what it was. Yeah. It was a really, really it's hard – truly not enough hours hard, in the day. Not enough hours in the day and not everybody has the same 24 hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's – It's just one of those interesting human experiences where we are all just staring into these windows wondering why we don't have what's in there or being resentful or judging, like judgmental about what people Mm. have inside those windows. And meanwhile, our own house is in complete disorder. Yeah. Or at the same time, you know, the beautiful things in our house are going stale and cold because we haven't tended to it. Yeah. Or we've left it and, and the fire's gone out. And the, the lighting bill hasn't been paid, and the dog is cold and hasn't eaten. Mm-hmm. Not you, Daisy. Daisy. And you know There's what I mean? So and food. the partner is neglected, and and your life is being yeah. is going on without you. Yeah, because life it. doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And it's just, it's just such an interesting thing. And I think all of that ties back to sitting in that loneliness sometimes can be so instrumental and so educational for yourself mm. because – being able to sit with yourself and objectively looking at your life, not through the, your mean lens of shame or your yeah. mean lens of deprecation or negative self-talk or comparison, none of that. Being able to go, like we said, like I said, and I can't stop saying it, like I'm actually really rich in this life. Yeah. I have – oh, so I'm going to cry. I have the best friends in the world. I have the best chosen family. My family, I have, I have managed to repair relationships in my life with the closest people after being down a really, really hard, dark road for years and years and mm-hmm. years. That's miraculous. In five years alone, I have rebuilt my life in such a way. I don't care if people don't think I'm good enough for my life. I am good enough for my life because I'm the only one living it. That is, that is treasure beyond compare. That's Pirates of the Caribbean level, like – Found the curse of gold, yeah. and it's so much of it. And that like, gorgeous that no, song no, is playing. Dun, and no dun, curse. Dun, 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 and I'm gay because it's Keira Knightley. <laughs> and also Jack. And, 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 and also some, Orlando Bloom. That and scene. Some, and also somehow like Jack Sparrow makes me gay as well. Like, yeah, I don't know. that scene when they're touching each other's hands, and you're like, honey. <gasps> anyway, not the panic Ooh. in the middle of the episode, but that's <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I today I was out I was out today with someone, and we were eating dim sum. And I looked down at the table and I was like, look at what we're doing. <laughs> we're having like tiny little bites of a thousand different steamed buns and bao and chicken feet and like all these like crazy, wild, incredible, wonderful, like 
cultural cuisines because we can. Yeah. Well, that was like me last recorded, night where I looked at you and I was we just were, like, we we ate car- we did caramel taste tests <laughs> we from had, Trader Joe's. From Trader Joe's, we were drinking tea, we were eating speculus cookies, we were having all these snacks. Matilda we were, was on. Matilda was on, and I, I looked at you and I was just, just like. like we're fucking adults. We're adults and we can do we this. Can do whatever the fuck we, we have want free right will. now. We have free will. Don't let those intrusive thoughts come get you. Mm-hmm. But because like, sometimes they come. Oh. And sometimes you're like, why did I just dump this on myself? Last night, watching Matilda with you and like checking things on the phone and playing with Daisy and eating and, and sharing stories and and nothing needing to be exactly one thing. Yeah. I felt so full Yeah, in I my too. life. I just too. felt so full. And then- the day it was God. It was Tuesday of this week. So today is what? It's November thirtieth. I got I got officially onto layoff two days ago on Monday, and Tuesday I woke up and I looked at Emily. I stretched and I said, I don't have to do a show today. And normally and that would send me been? into a yeah. spiral of shame of so many people would kill to be in a show. Yeah. So many people would fucking kill to be in a show. You were so privileged. I am also allowed rest. Yeah. And I love my job. I love my job. But I haven't stopped. Yeah. I haven't stopped. And it doesn't mean I'm like, I haven't stopped. I need a break. It's, oh, my God, if I don't stop soon and if I don't get some rest, where does where does the job line end and where do I begin? Exactly. And yesterday, or was it yesterday? Yeah, Tuesday. Yesterday, I laid around with your dog all day. I read a book. I watched some good funny. I watched some stuff on Netflix. I watched some YouTube. I watched some stuff about the Bolins fascinating Tudor Tudor England I'm obsessed with that shit very very and interesting I, I laid down on this couch behind me and Daisy laid on top of me for like four hours and I just existed yeah and it was just just being having the privilege of of a day of nothing I didn't need to be anywhere I had no one I needed to talk to I had no one to answer to I had nothing I had to get done and I just existed and it wasn't laziness mm. and it wasn't being not productive I rested and I laid and I took care of your dog and I existed because I was born. Therefore, yeah. I deserve to exist. Therefore, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. I was born. I didn't have to be born, but I'm here and I'm making the best of it. And it's just, and I laid there and I wanted for nothing. You have been so generous to open up your home to me. I got to smell your live Christmas tree. I, I, you know, I ate, I ate my snacks. I, I laid down. I wasn't hungry. I wasn't cold. I was hydrated, sort of. I was, and <laughs> um, I, as I'm I like, was yeah, taking yeah, care of the dog. I was warm. I, you know, I was fed. I was nourished in more ways than one. And I didn't need a fucking thing. Yeah. And it, if, even if I wasn't, you know, and l- let people roll their eyes, even if to some I wasn't Lindsay Heather Pierce, mm-hmm. I was just a person. Yeah. As I am every single day. You're it's pretty wild. fucking great. You're pretty fucking great. You're pretty fucking great. But that's like we're just we're richer than we think we are. And I I hate I hate this kind of I shouldn't say I hate it, because I feel like that that invites in I think hate begets hate. But I think I think that there's I really, really dislike and and find and find it not helpful to feel like I'm just looking into everybody's bank accounts all the time Mm. and then it makes me feel like I don't have enough which I think is the trap of it all it is the trap and I and and like I don't want to get into like is capitalism is we all know we know that that's what it is we know that it's programming we know that it's subliminal messaging we know it's patriarchy we we know we know it's white supremacy it's all of it but I know that I have enough and I will always Mm -hmm. have enough and when I feel like I don't have enough enough will come Mm. because I invite it and enough will come because I work for it, and I'll ask for it if I need it. You know what I mean? If I if I don't have enough, I will I will ask someone else to supplement until I can pay them back. Yeah. You know whether it's my home's open to you someday, or whether it's you know I watch your dog because you need someone to watch your dog, or it's just it's life is so much more than this really weird. We were not meant. To hate each other this way. No. We were not meant to s- spend all of this time. doesn't mean that the work is not meant to be done now because this is the world we've created and we have to fix it. Yes, absolutely. Or we have to write it. We have to, we have to change it. We have to shift it. We have to do better. We have to make a better world for ourselves. Absolutely. Because we've dug ourselves into this mess. Yeah. Or have been dug into a mess 
ourselves plus people that have more money than us Mm -hmm. and more power. But I was talking to our friend Casper the other day, and I said, we were not, I was not put on this earth to be racist. I was not put on this earth to hate people I don't understand. I was not put on this earth to be homophobic. No Mm -hmm. one was. I was not put on this earth to get in Twitter fights or get in comment fights about whether or not trans people are who they say that they are. Yeah. And not who they say that they are, who they are. Who they are. Yeah. I'm not, that is not, we were, I was not meant to convince people that human beings are fucking human beings and deserve respect. And deserve love. And deserve, and deserve, like, leave them alone. Mind your own fucking business. But we were not, we were not born to exist in this constant state of fight. Mm -hmm. It's not fight or flight in this constant state of like internal war civil war amongst one another yes that's absolutely. just not we were not created to be this way whether we were created for anything that's not what it's about i it's it's not about that yeah and that's where i get tied up and then i also feel lonely in that as well well yeah because that's kind of like two sides of the same coin right of like mm-hmm. it can be very calming to be like oh i'm a drop in the ocean mm-hmm. or what's the fucking what, truly what is the point and if, the, if that's what it is what's the fucking point and then point? there's so much privilege in those statements alone yeah and i and i fully absolutely own that. there's so many there's so many the things fact that we can even sit down and have this conversation right now is, is a privilege huge in itself. absolutely and and acknowledging privilege doesn't mean that the fact still remains mm-hmm. and like talking with casper casper's a black non-binary individual and they were like our biggest fear is to wake up one day and and be 80 and go oh my god what I had all of this precious, beautiful time, and I didn't do anything with I it. I squandered it. Or like, yeah, I didn't. I didn't love enough. I didn't. Mm. I didn't see the world. I stayed in. I stayed in my one tiny place, and I didn't do anything. That would also, if that's fine with you, that's also fine. That's also fine. That's totally fine. No one needs. You do not need to be around the world in eighty days to be to mm-hmm. live a, a full, valid, beautiful life. I know so many people who have never left past their porch steps and have had an incredible life and that's totally fine but that fear of oh my god the end is nigh mm. and i haven't no i haven't done anything with this beautiful precious time yeah. and these resources and this privilege mm-hmm. i haven't done anything with the privilege of being alive yeah and and here and they were like you know and we were talk i was talking about you know i was not we were not meant to be here being fucking assholes to each other yeah it doesn't mean the works doesn't stop no yeah it does it we weren't and they were like this is exactly how we feel and this is it's stressful and it it's heavy it's heavy and it it it's it's lonesome yeah and to to battle that i live my life in in a state of gratitude as often as i can and to battle that i I say things like I'm rich. I'm so rich in this life. Like just just getting on the plane from Toronto to LaGuardia, everyone was like it's going to be this long 5 hour cuz the 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 Toronto airport is a mess. It really really is. <laughs> but we we just like lucked out and I like I walk straight through customs and really really quickly. Oh, that's got, right. You have to do customs yeah, in Canada. Yeah, I got, you have nice. to do customs bef- getting before you get on the plane because I'd ha- you know we had this like pre clearance app thing. We could go right through and we didn't have to wait in this whole line. And I got I got to the gate with two hours to spare and I had time to get a food and I had time to get coffee and I had time to sit and talk with my castmates before we all got on a plane and separated. And I sat down at this gate and I went, "We are so rich." Look at us. We're here. We're not going to miss this flight. And everyone was like, yeah. I was like, I'm going to go get a burger. <laughs> I'm starving. Peace out. We well, you know why, but I'm starving. <laughs> I was starving. starving. I was hungry. You are malnourished in that Cheers. moment. Cheers. But you were full of nether. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we made that. We made that last day count, baby. <laughs> Rich in this mm. life. <laughs> I am rich in this life. I want to do a a, seri- a part of this because I was saying to Lindsay earlier, I was like, I really am enjoying this podcast and like we all know the consistency is hard, but that's why I'm like working to be like, how do I make this uh, a sustainable type of thing? Because sometimes it does get heavy and like mm-hmm. I was saying, I was like, oh, I'm I'm just kind of bearing the weight and then going back and listening to it over and over again to make sure that it's like yeah, edited it's down like to it. traumatizing And it's like, and- it's like I want to hold space for people and then I'm like, but I need to also take care of myself, and yes. I, I just have not found that balance. And um, and I was like, I need to do 
I was like, and maybe it's even taking on more labor, but it could balance it in a way where it's like, I want there to be like either a weekly or like, or the the off weeks where it's like not an, a full episode of like, I'm just going to sit down and hopefully eventually people will send in emails or send in like yes. things of being like, hey, this is how I'm rich in my life this week. Or like, uh, oh my God. <laughs> like, like I wa- rich, I rich. Want that. I like, want, like, what is enriching your life? Like, what is, what is making, what is making you feel less lonely? What's making you yeah, feel like, void? What is making, yeah, like, because sometimes even the word gratitude float? can make me feel like, well, I don't have anything to be grateful. But it's like, no, there is always something small. But, what but are maybe you rich even in? you have a tab. Editing Emily here. Just to repeat, I would love, love, love to hear um, what makes you rich. I, I think right now it might be like a monthly bonus episode. So please uh, send in your moments of richness what makes you feel rich at this time you can send it in an email to the oh i'm lonely podcast at gmail.com so o h h i m l o n e l y p o d c a s t at gmail.com yes i was just reading that off my notes app uh, you can also find it in our show notes or you could dm me on instagram if you want to send um, a voice memo, that would be awesome. I can play that on the air. You know, if you want us to be anonymous, let me know that. If you do send them in and you want me to include your name, please also include your pronouns. Thank you, friends. I can't wait to hear your richness. I can't wait to hear all about your riches. Even even things today, like the way that I put my socks on and my feet slipped right into my shoes, I was like, Fuck and yeah. On a dock, Things, to, on, for, a, on a lifted Doc Martin with a with a, when with a weighted wet. wheel when it's wet. But things like that, where I just went like, "Ooh, today I I was at the I was at the doctor and trigger warning needles, blood drawn. I got my blood drawn to get for like my annual physical to get all like my numbers and to see what everything's yeah. looking like in my body and, and my allergies. And yeah, girl, you gotta get and, that figured and out. And <laughs> I've had really bad experiences with nurse practitioners mm. uh, getting the needle in there to kind mm. of draw the blood. Sometimes they kind of dig around, and it's no one's fault. No, I go, that's I don't just know sometimes if it's fault because I would never be trained in needle work like that. But it was Some so people. fast. Oh. It was. So, she was in. She got six vials out of me, and then they gave me my flu shot, and then they gave me a, a shot of B twelve, and then I I had a gift card for Bibble and Sip. I walked right next to Wicked. Hi, bitch. Hi, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. Walk, walked right next to Wicked. Went into Bibble and Sip. My coffee was free. And I had a little bit of a flat, I had an oat milk flat white with a little bit of raw sugar, got my blood sugar back to a space, and then I went and I had dumplings. Hell yeah. Fucking wealthy. <laughs> Fucking treasure. Do I, have, do I have all the money in the world? No. no. Do I have things, do I have things that these wild, insanely rich people who think that they are above everything in the world yes i am judging because it deserves to be looked at with a judgment or with a with a crucial a crucial eye i should say not judgmental with a, a with a, a bifocal a crucial gaze yeah i a cor- critical very like a, a critical, critical gaze, gaze from these gays yeah a critical gaze from these bisexuals <laughs> but like I am so fucking rich. Yeah. I have everything. My my nieces are healthy. Yeah. My brothers are fine. My sister in laws are good. They all have homes. My parents my parents' health is fine. Their dog's fine. Everybody's dogs are fine. Like their businesses are fine. They have money. They have ways to feed their kids. My best friends I so many of my friends are married and, and doing great. So many of my friends are off seeing the world. So many of my friends are like just fucking killing it um, um, all of them are everybody's killing it in their own way i'm so rich everything's taken care of it's crazy and that i think i think you're right gratitude can sometimes become almost a chore yeah and you're like oh, do we need to gratitude i have to make my gratitude list and sometimes and i'm not poo-pooing that sometimes no, that is sometimes, sometimes that beautiful. is all that will get you fucking through yep but I think it goes that, down to I, the wire of like I, I got I opened my eyes yeah I peed yes <laughs> like I literally went, like I drank coffee yep I, I brushed my teeth today. yeah like, like and it's bills bills are not happening but sometimes that can be laborious yeah sometimes that can be gratitude and forcing forcing your nose into it mm-hmm. can be such a like opposite practice yeah I think that's kind of what pulls yourself. me away sometimes yeah. When like yeah. when I but when I get those moments of richness, yeah. Where like last night Lovely. I went I went oh, 
Which is like, great. I felt full. I was just like, yeah. and like so full that I was my like pop- giggling. I was like, were full. I was like, yeah, <laughs> like I was like, yeah. Oh. We were watch- watching Matilda. I felt like my pockets were full of gold. Yeah. And that's like, and it, sometimes if you have to make your life magical that oh, way. She spit me. <laughs> not really biting, I was like, like, what's happening to you? <laughs> Emily just made a face like she was yawning and also about to scream. And I couldn't. Because I'm trying to make sure that her ball doesn't go under the table because then she'll shake everything. So I'm like holding on to it while she, and she's, yeah. she's just kind of gnawing on it. <laughs> and her teeth just got me right. And I was like, ha! Ah. <laughs> not rich in this moment. <laughs> no, I'm rich in puppy. So dog. rich because she's, because she's having the time of her life. Yeah. But that, it really is that. Like, I just I believe it to my core, and sometimes it it that that helps me like string together those little things, yeah. And it helps me notice things that maybe I would have I would have like a blind set like a blind spot to, like things that I wouldn't normally notice, mm. like opening my wallet and like forgetting that I have a Polaroid of a friend in there. I'd be like, how fucking rich that I have this memory, yeah, right here, and I completely forgot about it. Or and you know, and I think like, oh, that's rich. It has a completely different connotation, yeah, and a completely different meaning. But like, I am wealthy. I'm so wealthy. And if I stay in that mindset, then I will always be. And I don't. And I can't always stay in that mindset. I'm a human being. Yeah, of course. We're gonna have our lows. But I am wealthy. But it's always something you can go wealthy. go back to. And also flip that script. Wealth does not equal money. No. And we'd love some money. We love money. But wealth does not equal like literal millions in the bank wealth is you know my mom calling me because the tomatoes are ripe again you know it's oh, yeah. like and she's got cherry tomatoes off the fucking wazoo we love a cherry tomato. and my and my mom's you know it's it just things it's just it's everything's fine wealth is my my niece molly texting me going how are you and i'm like yes i'm like oh my god i'm really god. good, I'm really good. Cause, yes because you made me good yes. like yeah, and God. Anytime I get a text message from her, I literally, I'm like, I am rich in this life. Rich in this life. <sighs> we are rich in this life. That's what that's what this episode's going to be called. Oh, absolutely. Because like how, and here's and kind of going back to what I was saying in the very beginning about loneliness and about how I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think there is richness in mm-hmm. in being still and being by yourself. I think that there is absolutely. wealth in knowing yourself knowing when you're isolating knowing when you just need time alone and knowing when loneliness isn't a curse it's like aging is is a privilege not a punishment mm-hmm. you know what i mean having time to yourself is is a commodity and and a and a blessing that a lot of people would wish for and just because people wish for something that you have doesn't mean that it can't be a burden to you yeah. absolutely not there's a balance many of everything many things can can many truths can exist at the same time like i know that when gabe finally is home from tour and whatever our life is when that happens whether mm-hmm. i'm here or whether i'm out doing something or you know whatever whenever it is that we come back to each other in the same space mm-hmm. I know that – and the thing that I want to hold on to is like, all right, well, how can I remember to make the time and space for me that I had no choice but to make before? And right. now it, I can I can find and pleasure this, in these it. hours that are so full. Yeah. There's so many extra things now. And like – and and how can I make t- make sure that I'm like nope this this di- this yeah. part of Friday like is just for me yeah you do your own thing yeah because like I want my time and yeah. like I do I think that's something that I probably miss most is like I miss enjoying my alone time because yes. right now it's like forced upon me so often so, yeah that I'm like you're living by yourself and yeah and it's just like it. yeah so I'm constantly like craving even though last night I was just like why am I flight why do I want to be by myself again when my best friend and it's here and it's like oh because I'm in constant fight or flight of like no now all you know is aloneness so right. that's all you can have it's like no we can have both and then also what, happen- what happened when we were done with Matilda I was like I'm gonna go figure out the shit that's going on in my suitcases oh and I then we just like we both put on headphones and did our own thing and then you were like how you feeling I was like I'm good and then we went to sleep <laughs> went and to I finished bed. up yeah we we both like went and did our own tasks did our own wrap-ups for yeah. the evening and that was it we Easy. closed up shop we're also very similar in that way. Very it's like, similar. Love you. I'll be over here. <laughs> and then you were like, "Ha! Ah, I forgot oh you're there." She screamed. She scared the shit out of me. I was listening to a true crime podcast, and she was hanging up something on the wall in the doorway, and I was like, "Fuck!" 
Listen, literally, whenever no other people are here, these are always in front of my door. (gasps) My whole butthole just went. Just so. I literally my whole butthole. Just so. I'll hear it. No. That's not going back. I might. No, just leave it. My whole butthole. (laughs) I, I even feel like this week, I mean, you and I had just like a beautiful talk last night where I feel like I finally like spoke out the shame that I've been feeling about my own mental health and like. Yeah. Just that whole thing of like, oh, once we kind of talk about the shame, it starts to dissipate. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. other it. people are going through what I'm going through. And yeah. here's how he, – there are te- there are ways that we can maneuver around it and fix – and and work through it and yeah. find richness in it. Because yeah. in a in the same night and all day where I was – I was like I hadn't found the time to cry and like let it out. And then I did with like this beautiful human like to just hold the space for me. Yeah. And like – then I was like, oh, the whole night isn't ruined because I let myself feel yeah. the loneliness that I'd been you like. You didn't ruin anything with me. And then, that was fine. And, and then, then we went to like Trader Joe's. Oh and my we were, God. And we were just like, everybody wants to be asked in Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> also, and then the amount because of times nobody that we was would sing looking at us. At the same exact time, we'd like say things and then repeat the thing and then say, say like a punchline at the same time <laughs> in ways that we could not have known that we both knew. And like the, it was just, it was just like synchronicity. Yeah, and it was great. It was and then we were, we were like cackling. We were, we were holding out in that old navy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so good. And the amount of times that I could just hear Gabe going, "Oh my God, there's, there's two of them. There's two of them. There's two of them." And then, and we. Got, if anything, there's more of us. There's still more. <laughs> when Tyler's we got, we got there. Tyler, my God. But it's just, oh yeah. And it was one of those things where, like, but, but that's that's the beauty and the joy of when you're lonely and when you're feeling all these things and you're dealing with whatever, you know, however your mental health stacks, whether it's anxiety, depression, you know, feeling real dark and having a lot of intrusive or ideations or, you know, anything. I mean, it, it, there's so many, there's so many things and no one experience will be the same. What a beautiful pivot to go. The whole night isn't ruined. I just needed to talk about it Mm -hmm. and have space be held and not be offered solution, but validation. Yeah. And then, and then find solution in, right, we're not moving on. We're just going to – we're putting that in the bag and we're walking with it. Yeah. Because you can live with it. You, you can. can. You can. And sometimes it sometimes it's fucking impossible and it feels impossible and that is also valid. Yeah, but for sure. You can you can take the problem out, look at it, maybe solve a little bit more of it, stick it back in your pocket for another time. It's like a Rubik's with Cube. It. Yes. You're like, you're oh, like you got a thing. You don't need to solve it all in one moment. No. You don't need to figure it all out. But you can understand it a little better and then go, mm, you're a little less scary now that I know what you are. Mm-hmm. And then you walk with it and then you're like, ah, <laughs> you again. And then you're like, ah, you bitch. And then you're you like, ah, I had my headphones on. <laughs> you see it a little more. And you, 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 when you name something, it just becomes so much less scary. When you turn on the lights, nothing happens. Like all the shadows Fucking are just, buggered. all the shadows are literally <laughs> just things sitting on the couch. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's just, life is so fucking weird. And also with all of this stuff that we've talked about is, as profound as I've heard your words and as, as deeply as I felt my own, it is not that deep. It's not. <laughs> Who fucking cares? We are here for such a short amount of time. And yes, it's a privilege to say that, but even with all of that shit, we're here for such a short amount of time. Be kind. Be good. Work for your friends. Like, work to, like, create safe spaces when there are none. Like, it's not that fucking deep. Be there. Be there. Say what you need. Say what you want. Mm-hmm. Whether that's in a relationship, whether that's in romance, whether that is in work, whether that's in, you know, parent, sibling, whatever relationships. Speak what you need to yourself, to your therapist, to whatever it is. Write it down. Your life is yours and you're the only one that can live it and you don't have a lot of time. So just, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be you don't have to live life to the fullest. It doesn't have to be a constant day of bucket lists. No, but, yeah. But every single day that you wake up, it's just wild. Like, you're here again. You go to sleep. You flatline for a second. <laughs> you peace out. You maybe have a dream, and you wake up, and you get to do it all over again. And not everybody gets that privilege. Yeah. Not everybody gets the privilege of freely living their life the way that they want to, even if even if it means they have a nine to five, you know, and like they live for the weekend or you don't have to do this life thing perfectly, but you do got to do it. Yeah. So do it. Cause no one's going to do it for you. It's not that deep. Just do it. Yeah. Do it. Do so it. Like, that, 
think you did that. Do it. That made me go. His toes. His toes. His toes. Was <laughs> his name toes. was Greg. <laughs> his name was Greg. So funny. But All right, Lindsay. Well, I the one you. question. Yes. I know that we've been talking for a very You'll long time. time. Oh, yeah. It's not that long. It's fine. Listen, people like hearing people with friends in their ear holes. I hope so. Um, And if they don't, who fucking cares? <laughs> Bye. I'll not listen to it. Not that deep. I'll listen to it. Um, my mom's going to listen to it for sure. Hey, Carol. <laughs> Love you, mom. Jen, you still there? Anyway. So, <laughs> one last question, because I feel like you pretty – and I feel like everybody always answers it before I ask it. So, even if it's just today or, mm. like, in this moment, what is the story that you feel like your loneliness is trying to tell you? Most of the time, I think my loneliness is trying to tell me, um, ah, 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 there's that pattern. Mm. Ah, 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 there's that pattern. And sometimes the loneliness feels like a friend, and mm. it feels like – like a like someone guiding me to loneliness feels like it's going like hey 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 that's that thing that we're working on and sometimes loneliness feels like a piece of shit little cunty gremlin can i say cunt on here yeah cunty gremlin that's like hey 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 fuck you like you're a piece of shit no one loves you of course i'm a of human course. being i'm a human being with abandonment and codependency issues like <laughs> anybody uh, table for one um <laughs> table for two <laughs> and um and i i really do think today at least and honestly like I said most of the time my loneliness is usually just trying to either tell me to give myself more love and give myself more space or it's trying to remind me of that thing we're working on because mm. a lot of the time when I feel when I feel toxic loneliness it's because I'm like I wish I had a partner you know or I wish I had not that those things not that those desires are bad but not for the right reasons. Mm. Go, I wish I wish I was with people because I don't want to feel this right now. Yeah. Or it's, hey, you've not really like talked to people in, in a little while. Have you been stuffing anything down? Mm. You know, have you been avoiding anything? Are you are you feeling shame about something? Do you need to talk to someone about it? Do you need do you just need human interaction and love? Like, do you need a hug? So it's I think the story is is that my loneliness is is doing its best to inform me. Mm. And if I treat it like a friend, it's less of a cunty gremlin a lot of the time. That's true. My loneliness is a friend if I let it be. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I I think most things can be my friend if I stop being – because if I'm scared of everything all the time, that means I'm scared of my own potential and my own self and, and the life that I could live. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be afraid to be here because I'm yeah. only here for a little while. Oh, fuck yeah. For as long as I'm privileged to be here, I don't want to be afraid to live my life online or otherwise <laughs> like i want to be here and i want to live it yeah oh well yeah. with that bye bye <laughs> bye <laughs> bye bye <laughs> bye bye <laughs> fuck me <laughs> well lizzie do you want people to follow you anywhere <laughs> uh, yeah if, if, sure if you want to you can follow me on instagram it's usually a good time i'm usually just making fun of myself and posting fun things about theater about being a taurus <laughs> always it's always food um yeah I love I love I genuinely do love my online community and I love yours as well I love I feel like so many of our friends have really amazing online I would say most nine out of ten most of the communities that I see our circle online are just like either all of us like all of us on on one page just like hyping each other up or (laughs) just really really lovely like-minded people or curious people or people who you know, have a desire to connect and I really, really love them for that and, and supportive and sweet and going through the same things and they just feel a little less lonely when they're around yeah. these pages, you know, and um, so if you feel like coming to some warm spaces, go to Emily's Instagram. It's at Emily Martinez. The real Emily Martinez. Emily no, Martinez official. official. I know it. <laughs> and you're what? At- I'm at Lindsay Heather Pierce on Instagram and then I think it's I think it's www.youtubes.com slash LHP. Okay. I'll put it, I'll put it but all it's also, in the, you can just, you, I'll you put it in the show notes. You can literally just find me by my whole, my, my Christian name, Lindsay Heather Pierce. <laughs> my Christian and so name. Everything, everything's usually under the Lindsay Heather Pierce. No Twitter. I'm not into that shit. Yeah, fuck it up. Bye Twitter. Bye tweet, Twitter. Tweet, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. Well, friends, tweet, tweet to you. Tweet, we tweet. love you. And I'll, uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much to tuning in to this installment of Oh, I'm Lonely. I hope you feel a little more connected than you did before. Today's episode was produced, hosted, and edited by yours truly. 
Check me out on social media if you want, at Emily Martinez Official on Instagram and Emily Martinez Entertainer on YouTube. But most importantly, it would help us out greatly if you could download, rate, and leave a gorgeous BB comment on our page. You can literally rate the show every single time you open up the Apple Podcast app. So if you could do that, that would be splendid. Because I would really love to help more lovely, lonely human beings feel a little less, well, alone out there. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>